Yoo-hoo. Good morning. We are live. We are. We're live this Thursday morning, May 3rd, 2018. Come on. Come on. Who's here? Who's live? Come join us. Come on. Come on. What a beautiful morning it is. Oh, I love this weather, I'm telling you. I love it. Like a lot. Come on, guys. Good morning. Another devotion this morning. This is a good one. Hope, hopefully all of them's good ones. I hope. Hi, Jesse. Good morning to you. We're going to look at um, a church hymn, one of my favorites. Hi, Debbie, Howard. Praying for you and Mike. <clears throat> Looking at one of the scriptures, well, we've got a lot of scriptures, but one of our hymns um, this morning, one of, probably one of the popular ones that um, is saying a lot, um, especially around our area, but is talking about joy unspeakable and full of glory. You all know that song, don't you? It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory, well, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. For the half has never yet been told. Aren't you glad this morning that we can have joy in Jesus Christ. There's joy in serving the Lord. There's joy in salvation. Good morning, guys. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our devotion. Um, we're going to look in a few verses, and we're going to speak about this song, Joy Unspeakable, in a few moments. But um, this, the church hymn was actually taken from Scripture. And, and it was taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8 and so this morning we're our topic is talking about joy in Jesus Christ first Peter chapter 1 verse 8 says whom having not seen ye love in whom thou now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What Peter was talking about here, and I don't want to go great detail yet because there's more scripture, but what he was speaking about is you know, seeing Jesus Christ when he re returns as he was preaching. He was saying, there's some of you that's not been around when Christ was alive and walking on the earth. Um, you know, he was teaching that, you know, because he had the pleasure of being right there with Jesus Christ. And he was saying, you know, there's a lot of you that don't, um, didn't have the esteemed privilege of being right there with Jesus Christ, but don't lose faith, don't be saddened, because you know what, one day you're going to see him face to face. He said, you might not see him now, but one day he's coming back, so keep believing, keep the faith. And he said, and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now you can look in John chapter 15 verse 11 and it says, These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. This is what Christ has said to us. And that your joy might be full. We can have joy. We can have abundance of joy in Jesus Christ. A joy unspeakable and full of glory. In Jesus Christ. And I'll give you one more verse. And it says in Romans chapter 14 verse 17. For the kingdom of God. And this is a good one. I want you to really grasp this. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the way I interpret this. And the way I understand this when I study. For the kingdom of God. In other words. For your salvation 
is not based on the things of this world. Our salvation isn't based on if our bills get paid or if we have a job or if there's food in our refrigerator and cabinets. You know, those are good things. Those are necessities. Those things that we need. But our salvation isn't determined on whether we have an abundant supply of that or not. And that's where a lot of people fails because they think okay my bills aren't getting paid I'm, I'm in debt and I'm, I'm you know I'm going hungry or, or I'm without clothing or without worldly pleasures and comforts of this life and we think because we don't have that that we don't have salvation that has nothing to do with salvation like I said we need the worldly materials and and things that survive but they're ne necessities but that has nothing to do with our salvation in Jesus Christ. Whether we have all of that or not should not dictate whether we serve Christ. And that's where a lot of people fail because they think they have to have all that and if they lack it, then they lack um, faith in God. But that's not so. He says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. God can give you joy. In the Holy Spirit, we can have joy, have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I want to look at that word unspeakable. Uh, again, our main text is going to be 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 8. And it tells us that the true nature of the kind of joy and unspeakable, indescribable joy. If you look up um, unspeakable, and I think it's the Hebrew or in the Greek, I've... Um, preached on undis un unspeakable gift, God's unspeakable gift, and um, it meant the unspeakable meant indescribable. We cannot fully, truly describe God's gift, which was Jesus Christ. Well, this goes in the same thought. You know, the joy that God gives us is indescribable. We can have an indescribable joy in Jesus Christ. To know that you're saved, to know you're on your way to heaven. Even if we don't have all the things that we need in this life, if we keep the faith, we can know that one day when we leave this world and we go to our permanent home in glory, we'll have an abundant supply of everything that we ever need. There's joy in knowing that we're saved. There's joy in knowing that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's joy. It says, I jotted some of the stuff down that I wanted to bring up is talking about joy. He says, um, when we receive Christ, when we accept Christ as our Savior, there's a joy that comes inside us. It's not always external where people can see it, though I think we should wear a smile on our face. But there are troubles and trials and tribulations that we go through that, you know, brings us down. But inside our heart, there should always be joy knowing that, you know, this stuff that we're going through isn't permanent, it's just temporary. So after we receive and accept Christ as our Savior, we have a joy, a joy that is, um, it's a joy that words cannot fully and completely explain. I wish I could tell you in words the way I feel even this morning knowing that Christ is inside me and, and He works with me and He talks with me and He um, walks day by day beside me even. But I can't explain it in, in terms that I want to use. But I know that He's right there ever present. Um, there's a joy that only the Holy Spirit can give. It is a joy that only comes from the acceptance to follow and serve Jesus Christ. I want you to know that the heart of a Christian is always filled with that joy which surpasses all understanding, which the world cannot give. <laughs> and it says even as Christians, when we go through difficult situations, when others think that they will be consumed that we can step out victorious, filled with great joy. 
Even when you go through problems and troubles, and I've in my lifetime, we've gone through some heartaches and troubles, and I've had people come to me almost the way Job did and, and when his friends came to Job and said, well, you know, you're going through all your trials and tribulations. Um, what did you do wrong? You know, pretty much blaming Job because of the trials that comes through. Just because you go through heartaches and hardships in life doesn't mean that you've sinned. Folks, listen, we're all in this world and the, and the Bible teaches us that man is born of a woman a few days and full of trouble. There's trouble on every hand, every corner we turn around, it seems like there's troubles. We've got to understand that the devil's out to seek and destroy us. So he's going to cause um, things to uh, lay in our path that's going to try to upset us, try to um, make us fall. But just because these things happen doesn't mean that we've sinned. Those are just things that happens every day. Um, what the Scripture teaches us, that there's um, no troubles that, um, that we go through that's not common to man. You know, we know that everybody is susceptible to troubles, but God will give us a way to get through the troubles. But we just got to trust in Him. And, and there's been people in my life that's looked at us and gone through troubles. Well, it looks like um, you done something wrong. Or, or it looks like um, God's not really paying attention. Listen, God pays attention. And He allows us to walk through hard times. Not because He's punishing us. Because that's His way of drawing us nearer to Him. The joy I speak of is a contagious joy. As Christians, we should have a contagious joy that where people look at, not a fake joy, not something that you're working up and, and, and pretending to have, but a joy, a pure joy through Jesus Christ, a joy in your heart that when people talk to you, they look at you like, why are you so happy? Have you ever had somebody come up to you and, and say that I have many a times? Well, why are you smiling about? What's there to be happy about? You know, look around you, this whole world. My joy's not in this world. My joy's not in material things. My joy isn't in money, but my joy is in Jesus Christ. And that is one thing that the world can't take away. They can take away my job. They can take away my finances. They can take away my home. They can take away my family. They can take away my health and my life. But they cannot take Jesus Christ. They cannot take the joy that Jesus Christ placed in my heart. So this morning, I'm telling you this as a devotion that if you're a Christian, you should have joy in your heart. If you don't, you need to seek the Lord and say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It is a joy that is born from hope in Jesus Christ. The joy abides with you even in the midst of troubles and trials. And lastly, it is a joy that overwhelms you when you do the will of God. I'll be right back. Alrighty. Anyway, it says it is a joy that overwhelms you when you do the will of God. That's the kind of joy that God will provide in our heart. So listen... Do not allow life's circumstances to dictate whether you have joy or not. I know that's easier said than done because none of us likes to go through heartaches. None of us likes to go through trials and troubles and suffering. But, you know, we need to try to pattern our life behind the way Apostle Paul, because he was teaching us, you know, that count a joy when you fall in divers' temptations. You know, count a joy that God trusts you to go through situations and realize that He's going to bring you through if you keep the faith. That's the joy that I, I'm still trying to learn how to do all that. Um, just remember that it's not the world and it's not the circumstances in the world that dictates whether you have joy or not. Bill Gaither sang a song years ago. It said, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. And you know what? That is so, so true. Nobody in this world gave me salvation. I can't give salvation to anybody. It goes through Jesus Christ. And those that the salvation that we, re, that we receive in Christ is the very same one that will give us joy in our heart. So our joy ultimately comes from God. Not anywhere else. Not from anybody else. I find joy in my family and, and, and joy going to church and joy working for the Lord, but they're not the ones that gives me the joy. My joy comes from Jesus Christ. So, and, and I want to close with this. It says, 
that um, sin will cause us to lose our joy. If you're a Christian this morning and you feel like you're not, you don't have that joy inside your heart, you know, pray and ask the Lord, is there something blocking me from receiving your joy? Is there something hindering me from receiving that joy? Because, listen, sin will separate us from God and sin will separate that joy from us. And you may say, well, you know, I, I'm a Christian, I'm not a sinner. But listen, we make mistakes and we fall short. And if we don't repent and, and, and make amends of things, then that can block our joy. Um, even King David, the man after God's own heart, had found himself in sin. And, and we talked about this a couple of days ago, I guess. And, but anyway, they, he found himself in sin and he found that he lost his joy in God. And if you look in Psalms chapter 51, verse 10 and 13, we can read his prayer. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now verse 12 is where I want to go. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And David went on to say, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. David said, But I can't be a witness. I can't do nothing effective unless you first restore your joy in me, this joy of my, thy salvation. Be right back. So let's pray that prayer that David had prayed. God restore unto me, create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me thy joy of, of the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Listen, folks, there's nothing more of a turnoff to me than seeing somebody who is saved but never smiles, never finds happiness, never this seems like they're always down in the dumps. And and listen, that's not a great witness. I'm a Christian. I gave my life to Jesus, and but you know what? Woe is me, and and always feel like there's you know even if you are afflicted, even if there's things going on in your life, let's dig deep in our heart and 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 pull off that joy that God has given us. We don't have to be a gloomy Christian. Old Hayes Tackett used to say, you know what? There's people that goes around they're saying they're saved, and they look like they've been baptized in vinegar. You listen, you just got a sour look on your face. If you're saved, if you're born again, then you have a reason to be happy. You have a reason to have joy in Jesus Christ. So let God restore that unspeakable, that indescribable joy in you. And I believe with all my heart, if we pray and we seek God and we start reading His Word and seeing all the joys that He has for us, that we can't help but to walk around and show world, the world a great big old smile. And once again, I'm going to borrow another line from Brother Hayes Tackett. And he said, have a smile so big that you can fit a banana sideways in your mouth. He can give you that joy. He can give you that peace, that happiness, that pure peace. There is joy in Jesus Christ. We're going to look at the song real quick, Joy Unspeakable. Um, it was written by Barney Warren in 1900. And just a brief history, Barney was born in 1867. He became a Christian when he was 18 years old in 1884, or somewhere around there, I think he said. Um, two years later, he joined an evangelistic singing group as a bass singer. He went on to become a pastor of a church, um, a church of God. He produced songbooks and hymns as an occupation, but he had written over 7,000 hymns. And though a lot of them is not used today, this one particular song we use all the time, and that is Joy Unspeakable. And let's look at the song. It says, I, verse 1, I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn, I had some a truck coming in. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. Verse 2, I have found the pleasures I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing 
I am saved whew, from that awful gulf of sin. Verse 3, I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see His smiling face. Last verse says, I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how its waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. <laughs> and then we look at the course, and I've already sang it for you once, but I'll do it again. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, oh, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Listen, if we can have joy in this world in as much as there is trouble and turmoil. If we can still have joy in Jesus Christ down here, just think of how much joy we're going to have when we get over into that heavenly city. And I'm going to leave you with one more verse, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. The last sentence of that verse says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Folks, that is our strength to have joy in God. So if you're saved, Act like you're saved. Let people know that there is joy in serving Jesus Christ. Don't go around complaining. Even if you've got a million things to complain about, choose not to complain, but instead, let's worship God and worship God for all the mercies and the goodness that He bestows on our life. So listen, have joy in your heart today because He will give you unspeakable joy and full of glory if you choose to accept Jesus Christ. Listen, thank you for watching. Lord willing, we'll be on tomorrow. Share this video. God bless you. Love you.